Today's project is stacking pots. In this video, I'm going to make kasane kobachi, stacking pot with lids. In Japan, we have a variety of dishes that are not only plates and bowls for eating off, but also for food storage. These containers are for pickles and condiments, etc. We keep them in the fridge and then bring them to the table as they are. It's better than using plastic containers. Your table will be more colorful and enjoyable with these. This project is technically very simple. The most important part is measuring the lid to fit the body. So instead of explaining the process techniques, I will talk more about the other details. I use 400 gram buff stoneware clay with 10% of lava clay on a small throwing pad. Lava clay gives nice freckles. 70% of my works are from this type of clay. It contains grog and iron, which gives an earthy tenderness to the final result. One of my concepts is to give a sense of calm when you hold my work. So this clay leads to good results most of the time. I'm based in the UK, so my raw materials are from the UK. I only use material which is easy to get here, nothing fancy from Japan, unfortunately. I use a small throwing bat, which is made from water-resistant MDF 6mm thickness. I throw a very thin flat disc of clay on the wheel and then place the bat on the center of it. I give pressure from the top and check the steadiness. When I start to make a cone shape in the beginning, my right hand is avoiding direct side force. In the beginning, the bat slide off from the center, but with practice you will naturally adjust the pressure direction and strength. Now, my left hand is holding my right fingers to keep the steady right hand moving. Then, I can slide it horizontally. Quick size check with Tombo. When I need to make a set, I use Tombo for measurement. I use a cut sponge for joints so I can slide the bar and also make them very easily. I open the center with my right fingers. The fingertips are digging the wall, then pulling the fingers up to bring up the clay. Both my arms are well anchored on the wheel tray which really helps to keep the movement steady. When I near the end, I compress the bottom with a wooden spatula. This tool is one of my oldest tools, which everybody should have. It came in a starter pack. It is simple, but very easy to use. Both my thumbs are interlocked to make the first pull. My left index finger is outside of the wall, so I can feel the whole length of the wall thickness with my middle finger.
At the second pull, my left index finger's work becomes more noticeable. This finger keeps the wall from going up straight. What my left fingers are feeling sends signal to my right hand. This cycle repeats until the wall becomes the right height and the thickness. With each pull, my fingers automatically keep the position for a few seconds at the top to compress the edge and then slowly release so as not to disturb the stillness. I'm going to make the top slightly wider than the bottom. I measure the internal bottom diameter 11cm and the top 13cm. I make the guide for the strings to cut later. Now I'm going to throw a lid. I'm using 300 gram of clay this time, but I will increase it to 400 gram next time to make a deeper recess. The centering is the same. Just a little bit of extra work for the upper part of my right hand. I connect both hands to make one tool. Both thumbs are connected. My right hand is using the connection as a fulcrum. I need a lid slightly larger than 13 cm. Again, I use this handy wooden tool to compress the lid. I'm making a recess to fit the pot. This is the top side and the next pot's base needs to fit into this space. I could also throw a flat disc, then trim this recess during the trimming process. When I slide the wooden spatula, the excess clay start to accumulate on the edges. I use my right little finger to press that clay down.
at the same time as when I slide the spatula. Otherwise, this accumulated clay would come off and become the waste. I compress it with a piece of chamois leather. I have seen some people use a plastic sheet or photofilm. Time for trimming. First of all, I check the pot's thickness. As a design, I'm going to make a concealed foot ring. I secure the pot's position with three pieces of clay. I'm making the center hole for my finger rest. This time the pot is quite hard, so it's good to use this method. When the clay is softer, I would use a milk carton cap to rest my finger, so the pressure would be evenly spread. I'm making the bottom outline to fit on top of the next pot. I want to make a straight line on the side. I take the bottom edge of the clay up to the marked line, then connect the top and the bottom in a straight line. You can hear the pot is a bit too dry from the sound of trimming. I mark the foot ring line first, then trim the circles. Then take the peak off to make the surface flat. This way is useful when the clay is harder than usual. My clay has a grog and it often grabs the tool and gives a wavy surface. I find it difficult to correct this, so I break down the surface with circles first. This side is the inside part of the lid. I will keep the middle part as it is, so I use a milk carton cap for my finger rest. I'm marking the main pot's size to fit. This can be in many different styles. This time I want to graze the base of the lid completely, so the rim of the top of the lid will be unglazed.
It is better to keep the lid as flat as possible. I use extra weight to keep it flat during the drying process.